Well, the markets are continuing to gyrate out there. We have a good week, things look good. We have a bad week, things look bad. Just look at these Toronto Stock Exchange numbers over the last year. These are weekly returns, and we can see how there are hardly any runs put together. It's basically up and down. If we look at the NASDAQ, it's pretty much the same story there. Difference here is look at these huge swings. We're seeing weeks with an 8% plus return. We're seeing a number of weeks with the four or 5% down returns. And if we look at the S&P 500 for a broader index, we're seeing basically the same thing. One week is up, one week is down. One week is up, one week is down. If we look daily for the last two months at the S&P 500, we barely have any days where we have a streak put together. As I say, it's pretty much up and down. This is the series where we have been looking since August of 2022 on a monthly basis at some indicators that historically have told a story. And the story we're trying to tell here is has the market bottomed out after we saw the, the, uh, the market starting to come down early in 2022. I have been leaning towards no. I still am in the camp that believes there's things to be done, but I'm gonna look at the numbers here. Uh, as I said in all of the videos so far, I don't know the answer to these. I'm just looking at data points. I'm assessing the data. And if you want to look at these, then you will take the data that you're gonna see and incorporate that into your investment management style. Hopefully that'll help you out. Let's look at since the last update. If you will recall, everything the last time we looked, excluding the NASDAQ, was down. The NASDAQ had eked out a small gain, one just under 2%. All of the other major North American indices were down. Since then, it's flipped. All of these same indices have been up over the last month or so. TSX leading the way, but everything is sort of in that four to 5% range out there. This shows how tough it can be to predict, especially on a month by month basis, um, how things are gonna go. If we pull that lens back, and let's look at a one year number here, this kind of tells the tale of a lot of volatility out there even after one full year, the leading index is still the Dow Jones Industrial down 2%. The worst performing is the NASDAQ down in that 8% range. This despite its recent gains. 2023 year to date. Let's have a look at those numbers. The NASDAQ, obviously the strongest performer, up almost 20% during that time. The other indices are all in positive territory, ranging from around 2% up to just about 8% for the S&P 500. Now, if you're one of the people who don't believe that these metrics can help, if you believe that market timing is a sort of a, a, a zero sum game, then I'd ask you to watch this video right here and give you some more insights onto my thoughts on that. But let's look at what's happening today. And as always in this series, we're gonna start with the yield curve. In the series, we use the 10 year, two year US yield curve and we use the 10 year, three month yield curve. The key here is this, if we're going into a recession, I would say that in virtually every time the, the equity markets are going to drop and we'll either get close to or perhaps past the bottom that we saw in about October of last year. An inverted yield curve often precedes that recession. So if we look at last month to see where we were then in March, the 10 year, two year had moved up and the 10 year, three month had widened. Both of these are in an inverted yield curve situation as we speak. If we update that today, we can see that the 10-2 has basically moved sideways since we last updated. However, the 10-year, three-month has again widened and gone further into negative territory. If we look at a one-year number, just for more perspective, we can see the significant changes that we saw from one year ago. The curves are going to go positive first, and then the market will bottom. Now that's just based on history. Who knows what'll happen this time? But if we're using history as a guide, that could be an indicator there. Today, obviously, both of these yield curves are well into negative territory. So when I look at that and I you know, sort of throw my emotions out of it, the, the, uh, my analysis is that this is telling us, no, we haven't seen the bottom yet, or we've got a lot more pain yet to come. Now let's look next at the moving averages. But first, before we do that, I just wanna remind you that in addition to this channel here on YouTube, we do have our Investing Academy and this is our online platform. And we work with Canadians from across the country of all ages to help educate about investing and financial issues in general. The course material is designed to take you from a raw beginner to a fully confident investor. That's really our goal. So I will put a link for our website in the description of this video here. Now, moving averages. In the series, we've been using the S&P 500, comparing it to the 200-day exponential moving average. And if we see in March, the S&P 500, which is indicated here by the blue line, had slipped beneath that 200-day moving average. When we look at it today, again, the S&P has crossed above that 200-day moving average. So we're seeing a lot of up and down. We're seeing a real seesaw in the markets right now. If we pull back to three years, we can really see the range here. From the start of COVID to the end of 2021, we saw during that recovery, 
the blue line, the S&P 500 basically consistently traded above the 200-day exponential moving average. Most of 2022, it fell below that. And now it looks like it's kind of in a range trying to figure out exactly you know, what where it should go, what should be happening. We see it sort of going up one month, going down the next month, going up and down. Uh, so it's really vacillating along there. The result here, well, last month I had given this a maybe because we had seen the, 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 the S&P drop below that average, but sort of hovering in that area. Well, now we've seen it go back above that. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna maintain that um, maybe rating for this month here. I do wanna look now at our third, third metric, which is the volatility index or the VIX. And this measures uncertainty out there in the market. In March, now this number had risen to around 24, and you probably kind of are aware by now. I'm in the camp that says typically, tr uh, traditionally, when we've seen a market correction, we see that VIX spike before we see the bottom, and we haven't seen that. Um, I I would have said, well, I did say a month ago that even at 24, it was still too low for my comfort level. Well, when we look at it today, I mean, it's dropped even lower. I mean, it's trading today around 17 and a half. So certainly this tells us that the market is happy. It tells us that there's people pretty content out there. It's the lowest that it has been in a long time. That does worry uh, me a little bit. Last month, I said that the verdict is no. And I'm sticking to this for this month as well. I'm gonna say no is, uh, that we haven't seen the bottom. If we just look at this one indicator, just look at the VIX, uh, I still am looking for a heightened level of volatility before we get to the bottom uh, bottom of that uh, range. Now, fourth item that we're gonna look at here is the US jobless claims. And this is where new applications for jobless claims will fall for the first time since the pandemic or since the correction began. So if we look back to March, we can see that there had been basically a slow uptick each month starting late 2022 and then kind of been flattening out recently. Again, we wanna see a drop in this. When we look at today, we do see a little bit of a flattening but not enough information there to sort of give me any comfort that, that this has really turned and we're gonna see a, a downward movement there. If we look at the US Department of Labor news release that comes out every week, in the week ending April 8th, the advanced figure for seasonally adjusted initial claims was 239,000, an increase of 11,000 from the previous week's level, blah, blah, blah. The four week moving average was 240,000, an increase from 2,250 from the previous week's unrevised average of 237,750. Now, my interpretation here, well, last month it was no. Uh, I it's kind of nice to see that flattening, the, the, the uptick uh, has, seems to have stopped at least briefly, but nothing there that is um, really yelling out to me to say that we've seen, we've really seen a turn. I really need to see that moving average start to come down. It's been continually going up. I need to see that turn before I'm comfortable that this is saying, yes, we've seen the worst of it. So I'm sticking with no uh, for this month's report. The fifth indicator, the Baltic Dry Index, known as the BDI, and this will go up before the market finds its bottom. With the last report, we had seen a sharp improvement month over month. We saw the BDI showing some real positive numbers there. Today, we see it steady in that range, again, trading a little bit more sideways. If we take a longer view since COVID, we can see obviously during the strong recovery, there was a lot more movement, a lot more raw goods being shipped around the world. And we saw that go and peak out somewhere sort of in October of 2021 or so. That has been on a uneven an, an but relentless ticking down since that time. In fact, right now compared to those highs, the index is down around 75%. It was down around 90% at one point. If we look at the Marine Link website from April 14th, 2023, their commentary is the Baltic Exchange's main sea freight index tracking rates for ships carrying dry bulk commodities fell on Friday to mark its worst week since mid-February as demand waned across all vessel segments. So when I look at these numbers here, last month I said the BDI may be um, was uh, giving us a positive sign because it had increased there. Uh, it's flattened up a little bit now. I'm going to leave it in the maybe camp, uh, you know, if it see, just to sort of see if it's able to maintain that level, and we'll check back in um, in a month there. The sixth and the final metric that we look at uh, on this this monthly series is the PMI. This is another recession 
related metric. And obviously we want to see manufacturing um, expanding. That's a good sign that we're not in a recession or we're not going into a recession. If the metric is trading above 50, that means that the manufacturing segment of the economy is in fact expanding below 50, means it's contracting. And we look at the latest numbers uh, from March. Well, first let's look at February. February uh, was at 47.7. The March numbers are in at 46.3. So we've seen another decline in this important metric, the PMI. The Institute for Supply Management on their website, they say the US manufacturing sector contracted in March as the manufacturing PMI registered 46.3%, 1.4 percentage points lower than the reading of 47.7% recorded in February. This is the fifth month of contraction and continuation of a downward trend that began in June of 2022. So if we stretch that line back and look back to coming out of COVID, we can see how that manufacturing number increased steadily through till sort of, you know, April, I think of 2021 is when it peaked out. Since then, and especially since January of 2022, we've seen a steady, 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 relentless downturn in that number. And as of a few months ago, it crossed below that 50, which again means that that segment of the economy is contracting. For interest sake, I'm, I've been using US metrics for the most part in this series. You might be interested in what's happening here in Canada. So let's look at our local PMI. We can see that uh, again, it is also below 50. We have just gone through a couple of expansionary months, but again, we're now back into a contraction type scenario. So again, we see another slight decline. Last month I was in the maybe camp and I'm going to stay in that camp right now. Again, we're seeing sort of a negative number, but not a dramatic number down. So my verdict for this time around is going to stay with the um, with maybe. So when we look at a summary, look at these six metrics, we look at the yield curve. My verdict was no. We look at the moving average, maybe the VIX. I'm still in the no camp. Jobless claims, the numbers are saying no to me. BDI, maybe. PMI, maybe. We have three no's and we have three mixed and zero Yes, is it seems to be, like I said last month, a broken record, but that's what we're dealing with uh, as we go through here. Despite the recent market gains that we've seen since the last update, when I look at these in aggregate, um, I'm not feeling positive that we don't have more uh, down to come. Probably most of that focused upon the, the likelihood or the, the possibility of a recession. Again, please don't rely on this information to go to make major decisions without doing a complete package of due diligence. Now, this series I'm doing here is talking about sort of these six indicators looking for a market bottom. What about the broader overview? Well, this video right here will give you Q1 2023's overview, some of the key metrics. I'd encourage you to watch that. In the meantime, I would thank you for watching this video and I do look forward to seeing you in the next video.